and welcome to Let's Fly V of Heart. Guys, uh, today we're going to do a bit of crosswind flying and taxiing. So we're just going to have a look at the, what you're required to do taxiing around. Today we've got a pretty strong wind as the land sea departs as well. Uh, the wind's coming from 152, which is about 45 degrees behind us. And uh, we're going to be taking off on runway 21. So you can see there on the heading bug, that's runway 21 at the bottom. So we're going to be turning all the way around when we get there. And the wind is coming from over here at 152. So fairly stiff wind. I would you know, say I'd probably stay home, I think, if it was blowing at uh, 18, 20 knots. But uh, today we're going to go out and just have a look at what we're going to uh, need to do with our controls as we taxi in and we taxi out. Get all our pumps and lights and everything all turned on. And uh, we're ready to go here. VR. Uh, flying in VR today. Loving the VR here. Uh, getting really, really good, smooth frames as well. So let's get ourselves started and just have a little bit of a look at um, what we're required to do with our controls as we move in and out. Because it's reverse whether you're going towards or you're going away from the wind, the concept reverses. So taxiing and keeping the side of the aileron down when the wind is coming from behind you okay so if it's back and behind you turn into the wind no turn away from the wind so when you turn left the left aileron goes up the right aileron right goes down the left goes up doesn't it so as we're taxing out this end the wind's coming from 45 to the left so we hold the wing down by keeping the elevator neutral and turning left into it okay we're turning left as we go towards the wind and we go turn away from it as we go away from the wind so we're remaining as we're taxiing around the winds coming over from those buildings over there so let's have a little bit of a practice as we go around so again 45 degrees front left so we're turning into the wind and we've got neutral elevator, so we don't have to worry about the elevator, but we don't want the wind elevator to get picked up or the tail to get picked up when the wind's two, behind six, us. Right. So then we use a little bit of down elevator. Okay, so the, the tail will, the elevator will then droop and the wind will push down on the tail a little bit. So front quartering wind, left aileron, rudder neutral. Okay, so we taxi out. And here, here NRES, which is one of the little plugins. Right crying out there to tell us where we are entering runways ending taxiways and things like that uh, we'll tell you if you're high or if you're too high on an approach or if you're unstable all sorts of basic warnings that you hear in a lot of airliners so you might like that plug-in so grab that from xplane.org uh, it's there if you like it so now the wind's from behind us so right aileron is going to be where we're going to turn away from it yeah we turn away from it and then we have a little bit of forward elevator push forward a little so that the tail the elevator goes down yeah and it's pushing down on it okay we're going to come up to the run-up area here and uh, we're going to do a quick turn around really really smooth really enjoying the flying of late I've got to tell you, I had a bit of fun. I decided to crank the wind up to 100 knots and see what happens. And that's come out here in a future video. That is cracking. I've got to tell you, that was so much fun. <laughs> Still got a grin. So let's do the engine run up. Uh, put the brakes on. Check around, make sure no one's coming out. We're probably a little bit further out than we should be. We should be a little further back in the box. So get the brakes on. And uh, now we run it up to 1700 RPM. And it is a little bit hard with the VR controllers. Sometimes you just turn it a little bit too far, but we're going to turn it back to make sure everything's all right in the green on the instrument wise. Everything looks and looking fairly good. So we grab our starter and we just move it back to one of the mag positions. There's you get left, right, and both. So we want to try left and you should get a little 50 RPM drop, which is modeled just correctly and then you move it back to full, then you go back to right, and then you check that, make sure you get a 50 RPM drop. It's just that you get a little bit less performance, you're only running on one system, because they're dual uh, electronic ignitions, if you like, or dual magnetos in this case, but they're dual systems, so they work 
a little bit better with both but if you turn it to one and the engine stops you know that one has failed that's why you do it so let's do a couple of uh, let's do a single circuit we'll do our best to do one and what i'd like you to do is just look at the roads that i use for references because this is uh, i have flown here for real um i flew d820s here for a for a, about six hours before i decided to go off and do uh, light sport flying so which i have about 75 hours flying light sport just so that you know that i've actually done this um, but again i'm no qfi so go speak to your qfi if you're doing some real world flying so you know, we'll get ourselves lined up here we're on runway two one the wind's coming from the left about 45 degrees make sure your compass and you're heading all aligned so everything's right uh, sometimes with runways uh, magnetic variation changes over time guys is something you may not be aware of so 2 1 might actually not be 2 1 degrees anymore it may have moved a little bit so it that is something if it's just a, a degree or two out and the runway's been there a long time um, they probably have to uh, re-qualify it or do something but anyway that's not something we're going to worry about today so we're going to get ready now the wind's coming from the left we're going to do a left circuit and again we've got roads as we go around so look at the, the the variations that we have so we're a little bit left of two one here i'm not real sure if that's the right reason i don't know if, if the uh if it's moved that much the old magnetic field but anyway we're getting going we're going to hold it down and it should turn a little bit into it as well here just to keep the low wind down the wind's coming from over to the left as i'm showing there and we're getting down you'll see that we'll get off the ground pretty quickly even at 18 knots. So up we go. Now you can see the nose immediately. And this is very, very realistic. This is what happens in a real aircraft. That it will wear the vane. You can see which way the runway is, just over to the right there. And uh, you can see that we're flying quite a few degrees, probably 10 or 15 degrees to the left. So let's say 10 as we go. So we just adjust it so we're following the runway line as we take fly out. Now we're going to climb to 500 foot and then we're going to turn left on the upwind or crosswind leg of the circuit. Climb another 500 feet to get to 1000 feet AGL, which is going to be about 1200 feet uh, on the altimeter because we started out at about 200 feet. So we end up the crosswind or upwind leg depending on your point of view. Now the wind again is coming from the right, so you need to point into it so it doesn't blow you down the the, uh, the circuit, you know. You've got to try and maintain it as square as you can. So you have to compensate every turn that you make. When we're climbing up, we're going to check around, we're going to check incoming, we're going to check down the circuit, that's all nice and clear, as we turn on our downwind leg. So this is uh, Bridge Road going to be flying down now you can see again the winds coming from the right so we're going to be pointing to the right to compensate it so we fly straight down this road it's a bit of an art guys it takes a bit of practice to get this right um, if you're looking for some real world challenges try and give it a go see here you go so there's the line down there you can see where the road is and we're flying down now once we get parallel with the uh, the end of the runway then we will just back off the power a little bit more. We'll get our flaps and get ourselves into a landing configuration. Now, just while we're cruising down, now there, there are two ways of flying and landing airplanes, really. There's using power to control descent and, there's use, and using pitch to control altitude. And then there's pitch to control altitude and attitude to control speed. So there's two versions it sounds like they're nearly the same but there are two very different ways of doing it and both are correct guys so i don't want to get in an argument with anyone over which one is right but um, i tend to use the attitude for speed and power for descent rate this is the one that i've sort of become become my default as we turn onto the base leg here now again the wind's coming from the left so we're going to have to turn and point maybe a little bit across the wind and allow that the thing is the aircraft is going to be blown quite quick uh, down the base leg. So you need to be a little bit more on your toes and get ready to turn on to uh, final as we get down towards 500 feet. Now, I've not been very good with my altitude control on this one. I'm still not descending fast enough. So I need to pull off some more power 
and get down so we're going to need to drop a little bit more as we come into runway 21 left so we're getting the uh, descent rates a bit on the silly one, side really left. not a great one but we're all about wind today so the see the wind again coming from the left and we're pointing to the left to get there and try and track the center line as we go down you can see we are pointing quite a ways to the left aren't we again guys as we come in on final get our speeds probably just a little bit on the low side should be more towards the 70 75 would be better and we're on center line happy with that now you want to try and get your wind side wing down as you adjust this so we're going to push the rudder on the right to straighten our nose as we flare and we want the left hand side wheel to touch down first ideally now whether you get to do it all the time but you don't want to bounce the left one and have it picked up by a strong wind so nose up hold the nose up on the horizon let the speed bleed off as your main wheels touch a bit of rudder there and see how we go we've got a little bit wobbly i think yeah we're a little bit wobbly here it's hard controlling the rudder with a twist but there we are we've safely got ourselves down back on the runway so we'll have a little practice on the taxi on the way back in and uh, we'll get back to the airport airport and get ourselves parked really quickly so here we are thought we'd save you the taxi in so time for you to go practice you get out there and have a bit of a fly around if you like have a practice with setting up a strong wind in whatever you fly we'll just fly microsoft flight simulator 2020 p3d or x-plane it doesn't really matter guys the same thing applies and we'll get ourselves lined up as we go across here and we'll get ready to park outside this is uh hartwick air this is uh where i flew those that little bit of time in the da20 so i hope you found that helpful guys i look forward to catching you back here at let's fly vfr again real soon and you'll find this on letsflyvfr.com with a tutorial we'll catch you then bye bye